It's the Emma Blackwell Show, searching the web for the most creative, intriguing, and captivating people in the world. Welcome once again to the Emmett Blackwell Show. Before we begin, I'd like to thank you all for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. This episode is brought to you by BookBannersEtc.com and Willow Kestrel Jewelry. If you enjoy the show and would like to become a sponsor, you can by contacting me directly at emmett.blackwell at gmail.com. On this episode, I have noir author B.R. Statham. He has authored a collection of books. Some of his works include the Turner and Frank Thriller series, which includes A Taste of Revenge, There Are No Innocents, There's Always Time for a Good Murder, and then from the Call Me Smitty series, See You in Hell, Dirty Little Secrets, There Are No Heroes, and A Little Bit of New, A Little Bit of Old. He has also written a few standalone novels such as Murder is Our Business, A Killing Kiss, Guns, Gams, Ghosts, and Gangsters, and many more. This is the second appearance of B.R. Statham on the show, and he is here to talk about his newest novel, Smitty's Calling Card, from his new Dark Retribution series. We are very excited to have B.R. Statham here on the show today. Hello, B.R., how are you? I'm feeling great, Emmett. I'm talking to you. My uh, 19-month-old grandson just kicked open the front back door of the the office, so if you hear strange sounds, that's him. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, kids will do that. <laughs> it's so nice to have you on the show again. I know you've been working on a new novel. Um, this one's called Dark Retribution, Smitty's Calling Card. Um, it's Is this the same Smitty that you had in your original short stories about Smitty? Yes, it is. It's uh, I've written over the past, what, four or five years, 30 short stories featuring Smitty. Mm-hmm. And this is the first full-length novel of him. And I, and it's actually a darker Smitty in many respects. I mean, he uh, he's a slightly different Smitty, but actually darker in some respects in that he helps people go after people who are really, really bad in this world. And in doing so, sometimes he becomes as bad as the guy he's after. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, and that's the thing with Smitty was uh, back in the uh, original stories. I mean, he was just a strict hitman. I mean, he was still a diverse character, you know, but I mean, it was still, you know, you got the whole premise of he's a hitman. This one goes a little bit deeper. This one uh, throws some more moral base into it, which is kind of cool. Actually, the original Smitty, I, I was trying to put a little bit of uh, uh, moral duality into it, but you can only do so much in a short story. Uh so, and people over the years have been asking me, uh, saying that my short stories would make a great movie concept, and when was I going to write a novel? So I decided to write this novel, and I really, I think I fleshed it out fairly decently. Yeah, it, it's really nice. I mean, now tell us a little bit about the premise of the book. Well, the whole idea revolves around there are millions and millions of good people in this world that uh, are helpless sometimes. And they're helpless because a situation arises that they can't have no control over. And in this situation, uh, and what do you do when, uh, if you're a good person and something like this happens? And so uh, in this particular instance, I, a good person, the good person I'm talking about is, is the police officer who has a sister-in-law that's uh, going, is a, uh, in the crosshairs of being possibly murdered and his hands, the police officer's hands are tied and in desperation, he goes and he finds Smitty and asks Smitty for help. And um, Smitty is challenged because, and interested in doing the, doing the investigation because he's meeting a fellow uh, killer who's as good as he is. And so there's a little bit of a rivalry going on there. But it's also, he's got to do something. He has got to get rid of this madman killer and not reveal himself at the same time to the officials of the city. So it's a challenge that he rises up to and accepts. 
Yeah, and they and they you you kind of revisit that too in this book. Even at the very beginning of the book, you talk about how Smitty is is basically leaves no traces. He's very well known for his craft. Um, I mean, basically, Artie the the police officer kind of knows this guy at least through word of mouth. You know, I mean, it's it's actually quite incredible. Well, and that's the whole thing. I, I'll be honest with you. There is. There are a number of people walking around in this in this world, and you probably know some. I probably know some that have done absolutely amazing things in their lives and when they were younger, uh, especially those who have been in some type of the some type of war uh, scenario. Uh, but they never talk about it, and you would never know. And Smitty is this way. I mean, he, he, there's always these rumors flying around that Smitty is is the ultimate hit man and can get in and out of places, this, that, and the other. But there is no hard evidence to prove that he, he does any of this uh, bad stuff. And that's what makes the character so fascinating. Everybody knows or suspects they know, but there's not enough evidence to directly point to Smitty. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it fascinating. Yeah, it, and like I said before, the fact that you have this dynamic of him meeting up with this rival, like you said, it's like, you know, how do you fight a killer? Well, you find one of the other best killers in town. <laughs> you really have to. <laughs> so now, yep, yep. I, I, that's what the, the whole base is, is about. So now this one's called Dark Retribution, Smitty's Calling Card. You, you plan on turning this into a series, right? Right. Um, what this little this publisher near to the knuckle and I and I have decided to do we're going to we're going to write three novels and then what we're doing also is we're collecting all thirty of the short stories and packaging them up into uh, anthologies of ten short stories plus a short novel a original novel in each one and it'll go novel uh, anthology, novel, anthology, novel, anthology. Wow. So are you going to repackage the entire thing? Like you're talking brand new book covers, everything? Right. The whole work. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, I, I, work. I really like the book cover on this one too. I mean, it, it's like caught in the crosshairs kind of thing. I like that. Um, the silhouette of Smitty. It, it's so cool. I mean, anybody who's out there, who's listening, you got to understand BR Statum. Okay. He is like an a noir master. Okay. He knows how to describe things that the way that a detective would and the way that a hitman would. So, um, definitely check out the, uh, the old stories too. check out this new one too. uh, dark retribution, Smitty's calling card. So now have you introduced any new characters into Smitty's world? Not permanent characters. Uh, not in this particular one. Um, in the, the first novella that's coming out in September, uh, and the first batch of short stories, I do introduce uh, a, a uh, love interest mm. for Smitty, and she is a homicide det- uh, detective in the police force. But uh, no, not in this one. Uh, there's a lot of characters in this one that you meet, and each character that you meet in this one gets a little bit stranger and stranger. Uh, they go off the deep end pretty deep. Mm-hmm. And I think it's got an ending that a lot of people are going to be totally surprised when they get there, which is also another one of my, I prefer, be, I think is one of my hallmarks is the odd twist at the end. Mm-hmm. But uh, they're, they're going to slowly come. They're going to slowly come. A hitman by by nature wouldn't have anybody on a permanent basis. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. They wouldn't be working for somebody permanently, yeah. So the characters, the uh, side characters come and go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like that. And, you know, Smitty's world, he is quite the loner. And the fact that you're going to add a love interest, that, <laughs> that is cool. That is really, and then you throw in the twist of the fact that she's going to be a cop. You know, <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Poor <know>. Smitty, <laughs> you know. Oh, so now what, what prompted you to write this new series, other than the fact that your fans have been asking for something? Uh, well, I mean, if I write anything, it's always in the back of my head, uh, the idea of writing, if it, it catches on to write a series, you know. 
um, on something. And um, from the get-go, from the very first short story that describes how Smitty became Smitty, uh, the idea was in the back of my head that uh, at some point in time I was going to write a novel, and if that novel did well, I was going to make a series out of it. Because everybody who reads noir and thrillers Everybody knows Robert Ludlum and Jason Bourne, his character Jason Bourne, mm-hmm. and and the, and it continues. I mean, although Ludlum is dead, there's another person that takes over the Jason Bourne series, and people like me, wind, me, you know, they line up and wait for that novel to come out. Uh, I'm hoping that's what happens with Smitty. That it already he already has developed a little bit of a following. I mean, there's not a huge number of people, but that number can keep growing and does keep growing slightly. But now with the novel out and out to the public and promoting it as I'm trying to do, I hope the public at large catches on and the numbers begin to increase, you know. Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny to me because when I think of noir and I think of detective stories and I think of things like Dick Tracy, right? Dick Tracy was, you know, like a comic serial for the longest time. And then they started writing full novels of Dick Tracy. And it's it's kind of flows along that same path because, I mean, really, when your fans start to kind of get wind of who this character is, just like when, when we had you on the show the first time, we weren't really talking too much about Smitty, but when you had mentioned it, I started looking into it and I thought, man, this character is amazing. He's got all these shorts on, on what this character is about. The, the shorts are really good too. They're quick reads. And for somebody like me who doesn't have a lot of time, it's good to read those. Um, and then you revisit this character later on. And I'm just, for one, I'm kind of geeked, okay, because I, I like Smitty's character. I like the fact that he's a hitman. He does have kind of a moral base to him, and he's so diverse. In each one of the stories, even though they are shorts, you really do pull in a lot of characterization across the shorts. So, um, yeah, I, I'm excited about this new book. I've, I've read just a little bit of it, but I'm telling you, folks, if you're out there and you're listening, check it out because it is really good. So now we'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. We'll be talking um, with BR Statum about this new book and about some of the things that are going on in there. So we'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. Have you ever found yourself looking for a gift but just can't find something that's unique and different? There are many online shops to find jewelry, but most of those sites carry manufactured creations that are mass-produced. The internet is at your fingertips. You shouldn't have to travel through all the realms to get something amazing. At Willow Kestrel Jewelry, you will find handcrafted creations. Whether you are looking for a wire-wrapped pendant, natural shells, or beautiful precious gemstones, you will find it all at Willow Kestrel Jewelry Shop at Etsy.com. Willow Kessel Jewelry uses genuine gemstones, including amethyst, moonstone, citrine, rose quartz, laramar, malachite, sapphire, and many more. You can make it rain with gemstones. I know I did. And it felt like I had been transported back in time to when me and my friend had to take a ring back to a mountainous volcano and toss it in to save the world. Now you can use the coupon code BLACKWELL20, that's Blackwell with the number 20, to save 20% at checkout. Search Willow Kessel Jewelry under shops at etsy.com today. In a world full of obstacles and haphazard graphics, one company has broken the mold of building amazing book covers, banners, video trailers, and more. Book Banners Etc. is your premier source for the most epic designs. Constructed from the mind of independent author Lynn Lamb, Book Banners Etc. is dedicated to making your dream a reality. They offer an array of marketing materials at affordable prices. If you're looking for book covers that pop, Banners that captivate, swag for signing, and alluring video trailers stop by www.bookbannersetc.com. That's bookbannersetc.com. Imagine your world, then make it epic with www.bookbannersetc.com. All right, and we are back. Now, in Smitty's calling card, a cop named Artie enlists the help of Smitty, who is a notorious ghost of a hitman who leaves no traces of his handiwork. Uh, What helps shape this new arty character? Well, again, I I go back to this. You know, there are a lot of good people who uh, get themselves into a bind and they don't know how to get themselves out of. Arty is just a, 
to me is just the average typical cop. Uh, to me, the average typical cop is a good person. They they want to do their job. They want to do, you know follow the law. They want to get the bad guys. They want to keep people safe. But situations come along where, and in Artie's case, the situation is, is he's on a task force uh, of people hunting down a madman serial killer. And the serial killer is as good as, if not maybe a little bit better than Smitty in keeping evidence away from the prying eyes. So there's been three or four murders, uh, and uh, the murder, the victims all seem about to be apparently the same type of physique. And so this cop has a, um, a sister-in-law who is the exact copy of, of the type of victim that this madman looks for. So he's convinced that uh, she's next. But since they have no evidence to go, and he, there's nothing he can do. I mean, he has no idea who's doing this. No idea whatsoever. Nobody does. So in desperation, he reaches out to Smitty. And, uh, and he says quite, he's quite frank and quite honest with uh, Smitty. He, Smitty, in the opening chapter, asks him what does he want Smitty to do if he finds this killer. And the cop says, Artie says, I really don't know. I mean, I, I really don't know. And, and being basically honest uh, to Smitty, Smitty finds himself more interested in taking on the case. Yeah, and you know, you've actually uh, compared the killer in this story as as like a modern day Jack the Ripper, and I was really intrigued about that because I'm thinking, oh man, now that guy was tough as nails. Smitty is tough as nails. <laughs> These two meeting up, it's just going to be quite the the mystery too. Um, so now, although we know that Smitty works for his own personal benefit in a lot of ways. Um, when he tries to hunt down a killer, it leaves me wondering if he's about to change his ways because, I mean, he's, he's teaming up with the cops in order to solve this case. Is this a case or is he still just an old fashioned man for hire? In many respects, he's an old fashioned man for hire, killer for hire. But on the other hand, as the book says that the, in the, second or first or second second chapter i think he's gone out and become what you might call a private detective hire being to, to be hired out to the public but he's a specialist you know and private detective um internal security if you will uh, uh, corporate espionage the high dollar client but occasionally he breaks down and like in the case of artie he takes on uh, uh, a case that's uh, for free because it's just an intriguing concept behind it. And uh, but he's becoming more of a more and more of a, a detective. But there will be there will be instances to come that he will be back in the old the old neighborhood, if you will, and he'll be become the, the consummate uh, hitman again, and and the stories will flow back in that direction many times. Yeah, and it's, it's amazing too that this one came out now, and and um, I'm sure you've got ideas floating around your head for the next one. You've already given us a couple of little hints about where this story's going. Um, what, what do you have next for the next book? Well, the next book is a guy is setting the opening scene is um, uh, the client, if you will, is sitting at a uh, at his breakfast table in the morning, drinking some coffee and reading the newspaper. And he sees an ad. Smitty now has a, he puts an ad out, anonymous ad that has just a phone book, a phone number on it. And it's in the, it's in the wanted pages. And um, he basically says that, you know, society, humans in society are, are neither for or against you, but people are. They can be willing to hurt you. And when situations like that happen, you may need somebody in your corner. So call him for a free estimate. <laughs> well, he sees that ad, that this new client will see that ad, and he starts thinking about his brother who walked out of his bank and just disappeared. And so he calls up Smitty, and from there, the novel goes on from there. When I write a novel, I, I have to have an image, a very, very strong image of the first chapter, or the first chapter. Uh, and the setup starts immediately in the first chapter for the whole novel. 
And if I have that, then I just build a book from that opening chapter. Most of the time, I don't know where I'm going with it, but I, I, I usually, you know, I usually step at one chapter, I write it one chapter at a time, and I try to write each chapter as to create a visual image, a particular visual image for the reader. And it just builds from there. It's also good, too, because you leave the reader in the dark a lot where they're questioning just as much as your characters are. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. 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 I, I, look, I love that. You know, I, what, that's one of the things I found when I was reading the novel that I enjoyed the most. I enjoyed this thrill, if you will, of being shoulder to shoulder with the main character. And we're both walking down that dark alley. And we have no idea what we're going to find down that alley or on the other side of that door. And that was just an exciting part of, of, of the read. And I'm, I thought to myself, well, I'm going to be a writer. I want the reader along with me. I don't necessarily just want to tell the reader. I want them with me. And that's a perfect, a, a perfect uh, method to do it. Yeah, it's it's very effective. It really is. Now, you've written so many books, and like I've said before, you're a master of the noir scene. Um, what advice would you give a new author who's just getting started? You better develop a very thick skin. <laughs> there is going to be, in your career, there are going to be far, far more people saying no than there are going to be saying yes. And it's not a, if you want to succeed, it's not going to be a short haul type trip. There are obviously there are writers who write their very first novel and they become instant successes. But the odds are incredibly high for that to happen for anyone else. So you just got to consider that the writing field and in, in, in that particular field you're going to write about, it's just going to be a long haul process. And you have got to set yourself up and pace yourself to endure. And that's the word that I think that is uh, is really uh, important to understand. It's a process of endurance. It's not necessarily a process of talent. Everybody has to have a certain level of talent, but it is a process of endurance. And a lot of writers do not have that endurance built into them. And he who endures the longest has a better chance of succeeding than than those who do not. Yeah, definitely. And and that's one thing too, BR, that I've noticed about your writing is like you said before, you like being shoulder to shoulder with, with the characters in your story. You like your readers to feel the same way. I mean, you can tell that you have a passion for writing and just by bringing back this Smitty character, I mean, you brought back something, uh, an amazing character that you had before, brought it back and, and did it even better this time around. And I really enjoy it. Um, it's incredible. And anybody who's out there who's listening, definitely check out this new book, Dark Retribution, Smitty's Calling Card. Also, check out any of the other Smitty short stories out there because they're really good. It gives you a little bit more of the background behind Smitty and, and the whole build up to what this book is all about. So um, definitely check those out. Um, also, uh, <laughs> BR, <laughs> we've got a game segment here, so we usually do this. Uh, this is kind of a new thing that we're doing in season three, and um, we're going to do a little bit of a game, but yet it's not really a game. It's more of a conversation thing. And because, I mean, you're a noir author, okay, <laughs> I'm wondering how dark this is going to get. We're going to play a game called Would You Rather, all right? Are you ready? I'm ready if you are. All right. I'm going to explain the rules to the uh, listeners here. What it is is um, this game is is one of those games where you pick extreme or obscure scenarios. So basically, if I say, would you rather uh, pet a rattlesnake or jump off a cliff? Then BR would have to choose which one would benefit him the most. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right. So are you ready, sir? Uh, give it to me. All right. Here's the first one. Would you rather... Sit in the line at the Department of Motor Vehicles or pet a rattlesnake? I pet a rattlesnake. Really? Why? <laughs> Why? Well, one of the reasons things is rattlesnakes don't necessarily uh, bite you with venom in mind all the time. There's many a times people have been bitten uh, uh, and not, you know, suffered any major consequences because the rattlesnake just wanted to, you know, move you along. Sitting in a line at uh, at the motor vehicle department, you got to realize that most of, most riders are hermits. <laughs> and being around in crowds just makes them nervous, you know, makes them itchy. 
Oh yeah. And I, I have to, I confess I get very itchy when I'm around <laughs> a lot of a lot of people. Yeah, I, I can see that now. I definitely understand your point of view. All right, so you go ahead and give me one. All right, if you are a if you are a hitman and you have a job to do, would you rather snuff somebody out by using a a um, a garot or poisoning them with in their coffee? Ooh. Well, I think I would use the coffee, the poison of the coffee, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> because you never can tell when there's armoretto in a coffee cup, because sometimes some poisons even, I guess, don't they like taste like a uh, nutmeg or something? I don't know what it is, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Almond. yeah, there you go. Almonds. Yeah, because in that way, nobody would know. So that armoretto is uh, maybe a little bit tainted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, here we go. Here's the next one. Okay, would you rather sit on top of a cliff or would you rather ride a train directly into a wall? No, that's, yeah, okay, well, that's a simple one. I'll, I'll take the cliff. Oh, really? Why? And it, it goes back to being the hermit. Mm. You sit on top of a cliff, you're at the higher altitude, so you see people coming and going. So you can basically be warned a long time before somebody gets to you that somebody's coming. Sitting in a train and waiting for the wall to hit you? I don't think so. I'd rather see <laughs> I'd rather see the problem coming before I, that happened. Definitely, definitely. All right, give me one more. All right. Would you rather uh, eat a peanut butter mustard sandwich or have a meatloaf uh, made with... Uh, pickle juice oh, just like mama used to make huh <laughs> um let's see here peanut butter and mustard or actually you know what now that you mention it br i think that if if you ever stray away from the uh noir writing you should also go into cookbook writing because um pickle juice inside of a meatloaf doesn't sound too bad to me it might actually be good <laughs> Well, uh, right up front, I'll tell you it's not. Uh, <laughs> although in, in cold pickle juice, you, you have a nice, interesting taste. Oh, when you cook it, it's nothing but vinegar. Oh, no. Yeah, don't doubt that. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be good. Yeah, I had a son that, that did the uh, peanut butter mustard sandwiches when he got home from school. So Ugh. you can survive from it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can. Um, I want to thank you so much for being here on the show. It was a pleasure. It was a fun game, too. I you learned a little bit about you here. <laughs> <laughs> well, just remember, I'm a hermit. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's that's how you pop out all these amazing stories. I, I really do enjoy it. And anybody who's out there listening, check out B.R. Statham's collection. He has an enormous collection of books out there on Amazon.com. Um, where else can people find you, B.R.? Well, you can go to that publisher that uh, close to the bone. It's a well. It's, it's you can either find them in the close to the bone or near to the knuckle. Near to the knuckle is technically the publication's the publisher's name. They're a little uh, little indie publisher out of uh, Great Britain, mm. and you can find them there. And so far, that's about the only two places you can find is um, you can go to a bookstore and order. You know, any bookstore and order my books, but the, the only place that um, you can see what's up front is basically at Amazon. Yeah. And, you know, it's one thing, too, folks, if you're out there and you're listening, you've read some of the Smitty books, go to your local library, talk to the people who work at your local library and tell them to start stocking these books because they are amazing stories. Um, I know a few people who have had their books published and sent to their um libraries where they are um it takes a little bit of pushing but i'm going to tell you guys what when they start to realize that people like these stories they will definitely purchase them another thing too is go to your local barnes and noble check it out because if you go up there and you say hey i want to see a br statum book on the shelf um they'll say well we can order it for you you know and they can help you get that yeah. that uh book out there as well so anyhow br it was a pleasure having you on the show like I said before, you are a noir master. Your Smitty stories before were amazing. This one is even better. Um, so thank you so much for being on the show. Well, I appreciate you having me. I really do. Thank you, Emmett. I appreciate it. No problem. And this is Emmett Blackwell signing out. Keep on reading and keep on writing, my friends. It's the Emmett Blackwell Show, searching the web for the most creative, intriguing, and captivating people in the world.